Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Today I was sent this three pack of TP-Link Tapo security cameras. Now these are run off battery, but there is also a solar panel, the Tapo A200, that you can get to get these powered so that you don't ever have to go out and get them charged up. Let's unbox this and test it out. So here we have the Tapo Mag Cam. Now this will be available at Best Buy. You can check out the links in the description below. So this is a smart wire-free indoor outdoor security camera and this has up to a 300 day battery life, which is pretty crazy. It has smart AI detection, full color night vision, adjustable magnetic base. And then of course, 2K Quad HD is pretty awesome to have in some of these newer cameras. We're finally advancing past the 1080p cameras of yesterday. So here on the side, it gives some of the specifications about this. It has a built-in microphone and speaker, night vision, um, IR LED, full color night vision, it uses 802.11 BGN at 2.4 gigahertz. Um, the power adapter is 100 to 240 volts, and it has a power adapter of five volts with a weather rating of IP66. Now the battery life here, it says your battery life could be 300 days if it's being used 230 seconds per day. It could be 180 days if it's being used 360 seconds per day. And then you can get the non-stop power with the solar panel. And then here it has a magnetic base it is able to attach to. And here on the back, you can see tons of different features that are available, 2K resolution, 150 degree field of view, IP66 weatherproof, and tons more. And here are the features and then what comes inside the camera. So here it works with Alexa as well as Google Home and the Tapo app is available on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And so here we have a mounting guide and here we have some little things to help us get the mounts mounted. Here is our power cable to get them charged up first. And here is our Tapo Mag Cam. A pretty cool camera. Those are some pretty awesome spotlights right there. A really big lens there for the 2K QHD four megapixels in full color night vision with the sensor right there. And right here on the front, there is our microphone as well. And then on the back, you just have a mount. Speaker on the bottom. Here we can pull this up. Kind of hard to get to. Got it. And there we have our micro USB to charge it up. And then up here, we have our micro SD card slot. And there we have the power. There we have three magnetic mounts. Here we have screws and anchors. And then here we have three different adhesives as well as mounting plates. So you'll be able to mount this plate and then just magnetize. <laughs> That's pretty strong. So here you can easily mount this on a metallic surface with the magnet that is built into the mount. Other option is you can use one of the 3M adhesives with the mounting plate to then secure the mounting bracket. And then here you have the option to mount to a wall. So we could easily just screw this into a wall and then mount this and put the camera on. And some other tips here is when you mount this, you wanna make sure that the sensor is pointing down or on the bottom and then avoid placing behind glass, avoid pointing the camera directly at swaying trees, avoid pointing the camera directly at vehicles and pedestrians on the road, avoid pointing the camera directly at a street lamp or sunlight. I think I have some really cool places that I can mount this and I like that it comes with some 3M adhesive so I can try that without having to actually screw it into anything. All right, let's try out this mount. Whoa. So pretty cool. I'll be able to angle this in pretty much any direction, even from the side. That will work pretty great. Let's go ahead and get the Tapo app open up and get them set up in there. So here in the Tapo app, we're going to tap the plus, add device. Here we're going to choose outdoor camera, and this is the TC85. Here I've powered it on. We now have a red and green button blinking. So we're going to say it's already blinking. And then we're going to go through the process of connecting this to our Wi-Fi. So now I need to go into my device settings and connect to the Wi-Fi. So here I have Tapo Cam. We're gonna head back to the app. Wi-Fi connected. Great. Well, let's also try out the solar panel. So all this is, is a micro USB to a solar panel that I can then mount and place it somewhere. So there is the solar panel. Here we have a mounting guide, and then there we have a mount with different screws. 
And there is micro USB on the bottom. So we're just going to plug that into the bottom of the camera right here and then place this so that it hits the sun and this should charge this during the day whenever the sun's out. And then um, when it's there's no sun out, it will have the battery back up and it could last up to 300 days. And with this, it should be unlimited. All right, let's go ahead and get these mounted outside and see what else they can do. And here I just mounted it under my soffit, just using the adhesive to test if this is where I wanted it to be. And here, this is what the mounted camera looks like and now we are ready to get to testing. It has now been about 150 days since I installed the MagCam wire-free cameras out of my house, and let's go ahead and see how they are holding up. So first off, here in the notifications, you can see that I have been getting a bunch of notifications. They are actually super quick. As soon as it detects something, it is able to give me a notification based on whether it's a person, an animal, or other things. Not too many animals around here, but uh, I have seen a few. So here we're gonna head into the Tapo app and let's go ahead and check on how that battery life is. It says it could do 300 days. Let's see if that's right. So here we have the front yard camera. Now this is getting a lot of traction right in the front yard. So it should have a lot of notifications that it's received, but let's go ahead and see what that battery life is. So if I tap on the settings up here at the top, you can see that we currently are at 28%. So it said it could last 300 days. I think it might make it to that, you know, 200 and between 200, 250 days. But I think that's very impressive. If I only have to charge it one time throughout the year, that's that's really awesome. So here you can see having a battery status there. We can see what the past 30 days are. So 30 days ago, it was up to 43%. And then 15 days down to 34 and down to 28%. So it's cool that you have this little stat here and you can see if certain events or too many events are causing the battery to drain at all. And then down here, we can see the battery usage. So you can see that it used 3% on that certain day and usually it's only using about 1% or less every two days, which is great. And then here you can see the highest usage that we had during that time. And here we can see wake up events. So I'm getting, I had the most events on that day, probably a warm day or we were out there playing in the snow, one or the other. So you can see all that. And then here it's showing solar energy output. This is not connected to the solar panel. So there was no data there. So I'm really impressed with the battery life. Other battery cameras I've had that would only last three or four months and then that's just, charging them up is kind of cumbersome. So having this great of battery life is awesome. Let's go ahead and check out another camera. Here we have the stairs cam, and I don't know if you could see that, but it was showing 100% battery life still. Let's go into the settings there. And here we have 100% battery. How to do, the, do that? It is charged up via the solar panel. So here you can see the battery level. It is just super high. In the past 30 days, it barely even dropped. And that's because of that solar panel. If we come down here, you can see all the wake up events we've had there. And here we have solar energy output. You can see that we are getting that solar energy coming in every day to keep this fully charged. Once I had the solar panel plugged in, everything seemed to work really great. There was a few days during the winter where it was really cloudy or maybe snow got on it where it wasn't charging up, but I never saw it drop below maybe 85%, um, probably not even that low, and then it would always charge all the way back up. So if you do need something where you're not constantly charging and you have good sunlight to that area, I definitely recommend picking up a solar panel as it's going to last forever. And here I did have that on a balanced mode just so you can see where that was at. And last here we have the west side camera. Now this camera area is barely getting any events. Over here, the neighbors, um, I made a zone where it couldn't detect them. So if they were out there, I wasn't getting notified, which helped. But there you go, 67% in a lower usage area. So if I come in here, you can see that my work mode is currently at balance. There's no solar panel on there. Um, in the last 30 days, it's gone from uh, 73% down to 67% as we have been outside a little bit more, but that's so awesome to see that this one definitely could go up to 300 days, no problem, and then I need to go and charge it. So I'm very impressed with how well the battery life is on this, and then you can see how much events adds to the lowering of the battery. So if you're getting a lot of events, it's not gonna last quite as long, but if you have a low amount, it's going to continually 
work really, really well. Now, my big complaint about using battery cameras is the amount of times that you need to charge them. But with these, I haven't felt that because I haven't had to charge them yet after 150 days. And then once they do die, it's not gonna be too much trouble to power them up and then put them back up. So that is awesome to see. Next, let's talk about just overall usage and pulling up the feed of the camera. So I've mostly used that front camera. That's the one I've probably been trying to view the most. And every once in a while, when I go in here to view the front camera, it would just continually spin. Um, I don't know what I did, I didn't really change anything, but it seems like the camera is already working a little bit better. Um, sometimes it just freezes up, I have to close the app and try again. And then yesterday I did for the first time ever, it just wasn't connected to Wi-Fi for whatever reason. It said, do you wanna delete this device? We can't find it. And so no, I just kind of repositioned it, um, went a little bit closer to it, and then it was able to pull up that device, no problem. So here it's nice to have the live feed. Now under the front yard camera, I do have the micro SD card installed. So if I go under the playback and download, you can see anything that I've saved. So here I have a few different events that we can watch. If I click the download, there you can see some other events we've seen. There is where it did see a cat. So I had to record that. We don't have a cat. So interesting to see that in the yard. So let's see what kind of events we can find. So this is for today. I was repositioning the camera over there. If we go back further, here you can see the dots where there were events that were recorded. So I can go back, see the kids out there. Let's see how far back we can go with this. All right, so there is the first day I installed the camera. So all of these events are still being recorded. That's when I was charging it up. And there is where I ended up putting the camera. So I definitely recommend picking up a micro SD card for these cameras to put in because that's going to keep the event recordings right on the device. If you get the subscription, you'll have to continually pay to have those events. You could of course download them to your phone, but it's nice that everything is stored on this camera where with the other cameras, it saw some things. I think you can see it right when it happens if you click the event, but it doesn't have that stored on it unless you put in that micro SD card. So so definitely need to get one of those for these cameras. Let's go ahead and check out how these are able to perform, what kind of quality we're going to get with these cameras. I've now gone through and downloaded a few different events. So let's check out how these look. And so first let's check the quality here. So this is 2560 by 1440, which is really great. So um, let's see when we hit play, there you can hear what is going on. I can zoom in there. I think that looks pretty good. Just gets a little bit blurry there when you zoom really far in, but I'm overall pretty impressed with that. So here, let's see how, oh, I went the wrong way. And another thing with the events, the events are ranging from 10 to 21 seconds. I didn't see anything that was much longer than that. So that's about how long it can do before it needs to stop recording to save on that battery life. Let's hear how that microphone is. And there, as you could hear, it was able to pick that up no problem. So here, I have a lot of people running through the yard every day, the kids out and about. I'd say it probably missed a few here and there, just as I was going through, like when it had snowed one day, there was a bunch of new snow, and then the next event, that snow had been walked on without seeing any event. So it did miss a few here and there. So here's another one. We were playing out in the snow all day long. Um, you can see we had a pretty fun day out there. So the kids want to eat the snow. What do you think? Is that a good thing to do? I was able to hear them loud and clear. Here you can see with really bright colors, overall it didn't wash out the whole image. Things are still looking pretty good. You know, I'll have different lights and things turned on here. Now, one day I went out there and the camera was on the ground and I was like, hey, what happened to this? And I had attached it to my house with the adhesive. So that definitely does not last very long. It did last 
about four months, which is really great. But to have that more secure um, location, you do want to screw the a magnet mount into the wall or you need to have it on a magnet. Now, when I took this off, I ended up just putting it here on my fence and it was able to lock on pretty good with the magnet base that it has. So if you do have a magnetic surface, using the adhesive it works probably much better inside than outside. And now let's look at some actual video footage. So here you can see during the day, this looks really great. The quality is really excellent. As I come closer to the screen, this little picture I'm holding, you can see the text is actually really clear. I can see my face very clearly. And in the back here, it's a little washed out because of the fence there but I think overall this looks great during the day. Now let's try the day mode during night with the color night vision. Now this works pretty good because I do have a street lamp just across the street, but here you can see that it is much more blurry during the night and you can't even see my face or the text on the picture. So it works okay, you can see I'm moving, but not as clear as during that day. So if you have a light nearby, that helps. Now let's try it with the spotlight. So here with the spotlight, you can definitely see a little bit more clear. You can see my facial features. You can kind of tell what that was on the picture there. But as I get further away from the camera, you can see less and less. So having that spotlight turn on at night if there is motion is a very important feature. And then here, let's go into the IR night vision. So there you can see the transition between the color and the night vision. Now when switching modes, it takes a second to work, but there you can see what I look like, not very distinguishable, but you can see the IR night vision works really great closer to the camera. The further away I get, the harder it is to see those details and to see if I'm even there. Now let's try a darker area in the backyard. There's no street lamp right here, but you can see up close, the night vision is working great with the IR LEDs. You can see very clearly as I get further away, it gets a little bit more blurry and I cannot see that. Now this is the color night vision. I didn't have an SD card in here, so it didn't record. So this is just a screen recording, but you can see kind of blurry, not really able to tell who I am. I can tell that I'm there, but not very detailed. Now let's compare this to the other Tapo Color Pro. So this isn't a battery powered camera, but this is using a color night vision that looks amazing. Like look how bright this is compared to the other one. So you can't have this great night vision in the Tapo Mag cams just because they're battery powered, but this is pretty awesome. So it would be nice if the color night vision was a bit better on the Mag cams, but uh, there is this option available from Tapo if you are interested. So overall, looking at the footage, I'm really impressed with what this camera is able to capture. And I have this camera pretty high and I think everything looks really great. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit more testing. Next, we're gonna test out the talk button. So that's what happens when I talk through this to the camera. Let's hear how that sounds. All right, now the kids are out there, so you might be able to hear them more, but this is what it's like with me talking through my phone, pulling it about arm length away. And then as I get closer, this is what it would sound if I'm talking really close to my phone and uh, at a normal level. So you should be able to hear Hi, Dad. pretty crisp and clear out there. Now let's check out how the alarm sounds. Yeah. Now the full alarm duration is 30 seconds and when it first started sounding the alarm, it did flash the spotlights, which was great to alert anybody that may be in the area. Now on the camera, there is a little bit of a light. So here, let's find one of these cameras that has a pretty dark area and see how the light is able to illuminate that area for a better view with the camera. And here is the spotlight when I turn it on through the app at a level three. Now this can be on for five minutes before it turns off and it does a good job of illuminating the area. Now in the detection settings, you can actually turn this on where when it detects something, it will turn on the light or the sound or the light and the sound. Level one. Level three, level five. And from the camera perspective here, we have just the color night vision. Then we're going to turn on the spotlight and you can see it gets really bright up close. I'm not able to see quite as far, but it makes the objects that are closer much more visible. Now, if you thought that was a lot of features, there's still more. If you have other Tapo devices, you can actually have them work together. So say somebody is detected on one of the cameras and you want a light to turn on, you are able to do that. All you need to do is head into the smart button down here. I'm then going to create a new automation and then I'm going to choose a trigger. So the trigger would be when the front yard detects an event. So you could have it be a person, a motion, pet, or a vehicle. 
then it's going to do something. So then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to come in here and turn on the cyber truck. You can have it turn on or off or turn on for a certain duration or something like that. So you can be notified if somebody's coming to the door or someone's in your backyard or whatever without even checking your phone, you would have a light turning on to do that. So then I can select save, I can give it an automation name, camera truck, always and then here are my other automations so it's really cool the amount of things you can do with those motion detections available and then again i'm getting notifications so quick from each of these cameras so that i know instantly if somebody is where they're not supposed to be every time i go to the stairs it's instantly giving me that notification for the stairs or when i'm in the front yard or the side yard i know exactly where the kids are playing outside because of those different notifications and you can adjust how often you are being notified. So if you're looking for a great long battery life camera to have around your home, something you don't have to charge often and something you want to have the storage locally and not pay for a subscription, or you have the option for a subscription if you want, definitely check out the TP-Link Tapo Mag Cams. There's some really great options. If you only need one, you can get that, or you can get the pack of three like I had in here today. I'll leave links to those down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.